Welcome back to Fox Explainer. Today I am going to show you an adventure, drama, movie from 2015, called Arctic. Spoilers ahead. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Watch out and take care. After his small plane crashes, Obert is stuck in the Arctic. He digs deep, clearing away the snow until he reaches the hard, frozen ground underneath. He puts his tools back in the plane and walks to check the system he made for his fishing lines. When he sticks a pole into one of the holes he cut in the snow, the metal attached to the pulley system clanks, telling him to check further along. Overt pulls a fish out of the water and holds it in his hands. He looks at his only food source with respect. He carefully puts the freshly caught fish into a bright blue container and chooses a frozen fish to eat. Back in the safety of the plane, he cuts the fish into small pieces and eats them while sitting alone and thinking. After his break, he gets his distress signal and hand-crank dynamo and heads back out into the cold white vastness. Since he didn't get a response to his signal, he looked around at the harsh and beautiful cruel landscape and then went back to the safety of the damaged plane. After taking the socks off his frostbite feet, he gets ready to sleep for the night in the warmth of his sleeping bag. As part of his daily routine, he walks to the mound of rough stones, called a cairn, that he built as a memorial. He carefully clears away the new snow and says, see you tomorrow before he leaves. Overt is still trying to get the rock out of the frozen ground, which has been resisting his efforts. It finally lets go, and he takes a short break in the icy, whistling wind as snow begins to fall. When he goes back to check his fishing lines, he finds that his bright blue container has been broken and ransacked. A big paw print leads away from it. Overt carefully checks the area and runs back to the safety of the plane, locking the door behind him. He is shocked, overwhelmed, and emotionally worn out by the difficulty of his daily life. Even though he is upset, his daily routine helps him keep his mind on the task at hand. There is no response to the distress beacon, so he turns off the alarm on his watch. On his way to the safety of the plane, Overt sees a polar bear walking silently and alone across the vast landscape. The next morning, he goes back to the cairn and wipes away the new snow. He keeps digging in the hard, frozen ground and picks out a single fish from his dwindling supply. He counts as he turns the dynamo, and as he gets ready to leave, he stops in his tracks when the green light on the distress beacon comes on unexpectedly as the weather gets worse. Overt runs to get a flare, which he waves frantically to show where he is to the rescue helicopter flying above. He shouts and waves to the helicopter pilot. As the helicopter tries to land in a strong wind and crashes, his joy turns to disbelief and utter despair. He runs to the wreckage to see if there are any survivors. Overg drags the pilot, who had died in the crash, into the snow so he can get to the young woman, who is badly hurt and unconscious. After taking off her seatbelt, he checks her wounds and finds the medical kit. Then he sits down for the night in the seat next to her. The next morning, after making sure she is still alive, he gently wraps his scarf around her neck. He finds an ice pick, flares, and a detailed map before he eats the dry noodles he finds. After taking the door off the helicopter, he carefully straps the unconscious woman onto it and tells her that they are going to move. He writes that there are two people alive and where they are before he pulls her to the safety of his plane. Overgird holds her tenderly before laying her down to rest. He checks her wounds, looks for her identification, and gives her water. He takes her hand and asks her to squeeze his hand to show that she is awake. He then tells her with sympathy that the helicopter pilot has died. He tells her to try to stay awake as she goes in and out of consciousness. Overg leaves a carefully placed note for her to read when she wakes up. He builds a caring as a memorial to mark the spot where the pilot died and takes what he can use from the wreckage. Before leaving, he puts a photo in his pocket. Overg laughs wryly and says, are you serious? As he finds a sled in the wreckage of the helicopter and loads what he has saved. Back at the plane, he puts the photo of the young woman's family in front of her. The flame from the gas cylinder he got from the helicopter warms his icy hands. After carefully marking his position and finding the area of the red flag on the detailed map from the helicopter, he circles the seasonal station and says, that would be great, but it's too far. He runs to the fishing holes and is overjoyed to catch a big trout, which he cooks with noodles he got from the helicopter and eats with pleasure. As he begins to feed the young woman, who is only half awake, he says, you have to try this. It's arctic trout with noodles. He tells her gently that people are looking for her. Overg sits next to the woman with a fever and puts his hand in hers. She squeezes it weakly. As her condition gets worse, 
he makes the hard decision to leave the safety of the plane and take the direct route to the seasonal station. He gathers the things they will need for the trip and ties them and the woman to the sled. After leaving an oat with their names and destination at both the plane and the helicopter, he starts the hard journey, pulling the sled behind him. Oberg stands still and looks nervously ahead at the huge, icy, rocky tundra. He tells the injured woman who isn't responding that everything is fine and keeps dragging her along. They stop for the night, and he digs a snow cave for them to stay in while he feeds her. He tells her to stay alert while he's feeding her. The next morning, they keep going until he reaches the red flag and clears away the snow to reveal a box. He thinks for a while and then marks his map before opening the box to find rope and his ID, which he puts in his pocket. Overbed reaches a steep, rocky outcrop that is not shown on the map. He figures out the distance and realizes with despair that the longer alternative route is windy. He decides to climb to the top and sees a fairly smooth path. He gets down and decides to slowly and carefully pull the unconscious woman up. He loses control of the rope. Overbed tries again with all the strength he has, determined to succeed. He loses his grasp on the rope. After his third try, he loses his balance and she falls down again. He accepts that he has lost. Even though he is completely drained, both mentally and physically, he taps into his deepest primal desire to survive. He looks down the slope and says, we'll go a better way. The longer way around the icy outcrops will add at least three hard days to their trip. He continues to drag the sled behind him until he finds a cave to sleep in for the night. She doesn't respond when he tries to feed her and give her water to drink. He tells her she has to try and continues to care for her. A polar bear is drawn to the cave by the smell of fish cooking and paws at the entrance, trying to get in. Overd uses a distress flare to scare it away. He sits in shock and tears. The next morning, he struggles to pull the sled behind him through the blizzard. He turns it sideways to act as a barrier between them and the icy, howling wind. He sleeps in a sleeping bag next to the woman who isn't awake because he is so tired. When he wakes up, he takes down the makeshift shelter and takes off his gloves to see if his hands are hurting from frostbite. He keeps dragging the sled behind him, feeling overwhelmed by the size of his task. She doesn't respond when he asks her to squeeze his hand. He zips up her sleeping bag and stands next to the small fire he made to watch over her while he thinks. After checking her wound, he gently puts her photo in her hand, but she doesn't move. He notices the blood on her mouth and decides to keep going alone. He pulls his supplies on a sled and stops when he sees flowers growing in the middle of a caring in the harsh landscape. As he walks away, he falls into a hole. He wakes up at the bottom of a cave with one of his legs trapped under a boulder. Even though he tries hard to get out, he hurts his leg more. Overg lies back in the snow after his hard work, slowly coming to terms with the desperate and dangerous situation he is in. He finally gets his injured leg free and lies in the snow, in a lot of pain, until he slowly crawls back to the surface. He stumbles back to the young woman on the sled and checks to see if she is still alive. When she greets him, he feels terrible about leaving her alone. Overt cries as he apologizes for leaving her and tells her you are not alone and it will be okay. These two brave, broken people are dependent on each other because of their situations. Even though he hurt his leg, he pushes the sled forward after packing the deep open wound on his calf with snow and using a tourniquet to stop the bleeding. He digs deep into his mental reserves and slowly moves forward, fighting every step of the way while pulling the sled behind him. When the young woman coughs, he stops to give her water as he watches the ground sheet blow away. He stands there in shock, holding her close and telling her, It's all right, you're not alone. He asks her if she can hear him, and she tells him over and over that she is not alone and it's okay as he gently puts her down on the snow. Overd can't go on and has no energy or hope as he lies in the snow next to her and holds her hand. He feels like he can't go on and can't do anything. Even though these two brave, hurt people seem to have accepted their fate after fighting against the odds for so long, they take some comfort in the fact that they are not alone. As the movie comes to an end, a helicopter lands close behind them, but they don't notice it. That's all for now, I hope you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more and hit the like button to help me out and also leave a comment if you want me to explain your favorite film. Until next time, take care.